Essential Self-Care Podcast, a podcast for those of us who are, let's face it, too busy for self-care. In this podcast, you will hear real life stories from people who leaned into their self-care as they were navigating life's storms. You'll learn practical tips, tools, and strategies to incorporate self-care into your own busy life as well. You'll hear from expert guests sharing their expertise on specific tools and modalities of self-care to optimize your well-being in your life, career, and relationships. I'm your host, Dr. Sheetal Ajmani. I am a physician, best-selling author, and founder of Radiant Living Institute, where I guide high-achieving women to get unstuck and learn to live radiantly again through major life transitions. Quick disclaimer before we dive into the episode, please know that this podcast is for educational purposes only and is not medical advice. Always seek the advice of your own health practitioner or mental health provider for your specific situation. Now, let's get started. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Essential Self-Care Podcast. Today, I am so excited to welcome Summer Blake to the Essential Self-Care Podcast. Summer and I were introduced by a mutual friend, Jen Young. She was previously a guest on this show. Jen is a good friend of both of ours, and she recently published a book called Rain, Harness the Wild Power of Your Senses. And Summer actually did all of the illustrations for this book. So if you're watching on YouTube, I'm holding up the book here. If you're listening to the audio, go back and check out the YouTube to take a peek at her artwork here. I'll also, of course, include a link to her website with her amazing portfolio and artwork. But that's how we connected. So definitely stick around for this amazing conversation that we're about to have with Summer Blake. And then also afterwards, check out episode 51 with our mutual friend, Jen Young as she shares her self-care journey as well. But for now, back to today's episode, Summer is a visionary artist. Her art is an invitation to those who view it to believe in their potential for transformation. She believes that through life's greatest challenges, we have the opportunity to transcend who we've been and awaken to the nature of our own divinity. So if you've been following my work for any period of time, then you know how much of this belief resonates with my own and why we instantly connected and I had to invite her to the show. So today, Summer is going to share a bit about her self-care journey with us. I'm so excited to have you here, Summer. Welcome to the show. Yes. Thank you so much for having me on, Cheetal. I am so thrilled to be here today and just to get to talk with you about, I think, some really important aspects of how to move through life. So, so yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And Summer and I connected over a phone call before we scheduled this recording. And I just had so much fun chatting with you over the phone and hearing more about your journey. So I'm really excited to share that with our listeners here today. So Summer, can you tell us a little bit about a time in your life where self-care became no longer an option for you, but an absolute priority? And more importantly, what did your journey look like from there? Like what sort of specific tools and modalities did you turn to to navigate that situation? Sure. So yeah, I guess, you know, what I'll talk about is a time in my life that really was a pivotal turning point for me. And kind of to, to envision that time in my life, basically, uh, I, I was working in the financial services sector, um, you know, very corporate job, um, office job, all that stuff. And during that time, you know, I had been recently been hired. It was a very hectic job, um, just very busy, very stressful. Um, but I also was realizing as I learned a little bit more about my role and my responsibilities that there was a lot about the role that did not really comport with who I was as an individual and really what I felt I wanted to be in this world as well as, you know, a lot of questioning of, you know, like, what what really am I doing? Like, it didn't feel entirely ethical to me, just the way that this, this aspect of the world worked. Um, and so there was an aspect of that in there with me where I felt like my integrity did not fit with what I was spending actively most of my life, my waking hours doing. And so 
you know, a lot of this questioning and, and the high stress of the job was taking a very heavy toll on my physical and mental health in, in so many different ways. I, you know, struggle with chronic pain. I'm in recovery from an eating disorder that, you know, significantly consumed a portion of my life. And all of these things kind of were very affected by the fact that, you know, this role was, was not something that I was comfortable with. Um, but at the time as well, I was steadily moving toward kind of an emergence into my identity as a visual artist. Um, and that in itself for a long time had been such a huge part of my healing journey through a lot of traumas and through, you know, my addiction with my eating disorder. Um, and so I was coming to realize that, you know, it's like, well, what what do I really want to do with my time? And for me, the answer was that I, I wanted to build out the significance of my art and my expression in my life. And so, you know, predominantly, I decided to take the very bold action to step away from my job and from my career. Um, and first and foremost, that part of my journey was an intention to take some time for myself. Um, I really wanted to rest because I was in such a state of just exhaustion, you know, burnout, just everything imaginable, and I needed my body to heal. But I also felt this significant sense of repression, like self-repression at this point, because I was actively making a choice to stay at a job and, and live a, a type of life that, you know, didn't resonate with me. And so I stepped away you know, through my, my healing journey. I began to you know, manage a career as a full-time artist. And so there was and has and, and is so much healing in the work that I do through that. But it's definitely a very rapid process, one that was measured. You know, I took steps to kind of prepare myself for this this huge transition. But but yeah, just, just moving into that experience of much fuller self-expression and self-assertion. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. And there's so much I want to reflect on here. Thank you, first of all, just for sharing a bit more about your journey um, and just for your openness and your um, transparency and openness to to be vulnerable and, and share your journey with us here today. You know, one, so I took, I always take a bunch of notes. So I took some notes. And so one thing, you know, that stuck out to me is is when you mentioned essentially your job, the, the thing that you're waking up and going to do every single day, you felt deep inside that this just did not match, you know, the way I wrote it down was your purpose, right? Kind of your inner voice. And, and as you said, in your words, your integrity, you know, you found that it just wasn't matching that. And I, often, you know, one thing I often say is that I feel like the greatest um, sort of discord or distress that we feel in our life is when, you know, we are living our life externally in a way that isn't matching up with our inner world or with our inner voice or what we, um, what our kind of sort of, you could say even like our gut instinct truly knows that we need or the path that we need to be walking on, right? And when we're living our life or when there's life situations that we are, you know, enmeshed in that are not aligned with that, I feel like that's when we often find and experience the greatest amount of discord and distress in our life. And often it is through, you know, another thing that I truly believe in is that often I've talked about it on this on the other episodes as well, is that our body is always sending us signals. And so as we begin to learn to, you know, kind of cultivate that self-awareness to start to tune into our body signals and, and, and with some curiosity of like, okay, what is my body trying to tell me here? You know, what are, you know, you mentioned like chronic pain, um, and things like that, like, like, what is my body trying to tell me here? And, and kind of using that as a signal, because a lot of times that can be a way I feel like for your inner voice to be heard, right? Because your inner voice can be pretty subtle. And it's kind of when we are um, not tuning in or not taking action on it early on, like it sends signals louder and louder. And that often shows up through our physical body. And I've had that experience as mm -hmm. well. I've had, you know, really challenging times in my life where um, I have developed chronic pain. And when I got myself out of that, those situations, and it took me a while to realize like what situations were really um, triggering and contributing to that pain, but they were very much situations that I had control over that I had choice to remain in those situations or or step away and when i stepped away the, the that pain like 
immediately resolved. And it's just, you know, just an, such an interesting testament to um, how our body is kind of always sending us those signals. And then another thing I really wanted to reflect on and, and really just kind of point out for our listeners and emphasize for our listeners, because I really love this question that you asked yourself, or you asked yourself, what do I really want to do with my time? I think that's just a really powerful question for all of us to think about, you know, because for all of us, and I think especially coming through the pandemic, it really made it even more clear to so many of us how our time here is really is limited. You know, there really is a limit to that. And so with that limited amount of time, and none of us know how long that time is, you know, none of that's one certain things none of us know one certain thing i guess two certain things one that our time is limited here and two that none of us know how long that is or when that's going to be and so like really thinking about well like what do i want to really want to do with my time how do i want to spend my time how do i want to invest that you know like i think really thinking of our time you know we think of like money and finances as a resource and then as an asset but time is you know one that cannot be replaced and that we can never get back, right? Like, like time is such a valuable resource and asset. So how do we want to spend our time? That really stood, stood out to me, that question. Mm -hmm. So I really love that. And then also how you mentioned that the first thing you did when you left your corporate position was really, you had it in your mind that you really wanted to initially emphasize rest. Um, just recognizing that that was something that your body needed because and I wanted to point that out because I think that's something that we don't give enough attention to in our current modern society and day-to-day -day life. Um, yet rest, rest is so, so vital. Um, there's so much I can talk about rest <laughs> with regards <laughs> yeah. to how it affects, you know, you know, just nervous system regulation and things like that. For now, I just want to comment on that. I'm, I was really happy to hear that because I think that's something that is often so overlooked in our modern culture, but it's just so, so important. So, so you have now, you know, transitioned to full-time artist where, you know, another really beautiful thing that you mentioned is that you are experiencing self rep repression, um, continuing to spend your days doing something that really didn't match your integrity. And now you have transitioned to self expression. Like, what was that? Like, that's so beautiful beautiful self repression to now, you know, this journey to now like self expression in your day to day life. So what does that look like for you now? Like what sort of differences do you notice in terms of how you're feeling physically, mentally, emotionally, like through that journey? It's a great question. And I actually want to quantify it. I want to clarify an aspect too, because uh, currently I've kind of been in, out, in and out. Um, I started out as a full time artist. I, have you know, Currently, I'm working part time, you know, at a, an additional job to secure kind of some reliable income. Um, but I think it's important to highlight that aspect, too, because there's the reality of the journey and the fact that, you know, we hear these glowing success stories of people who suddenly just launched a new career and it just everything seems like it's just moving perfect. And for me, it's really a profoundly complex journey and, you know, continually assessing and recalibrating our needs and our, our placement in life. Um, so for me, it's really like that, that experience of, of gentleness with the process and understanding that, you know, there's not like the, the happy ending that you reach, but rather there's a journey of getting to understand and build your relationship with yourself. Um, and for me, that really is is getting in touch with those needs in a much more profound way that's just really being real with with how you can live your life, especially in the context of this insanely complex world <laughs> that has so many demands and ways of being. Um, I love that you mentioned that. And I want to just pause and emphasize that because I think that's something that we don't talk about enough. Right. Um, you know, I think we hear so many stories in media now, you know, just like social media and, and things like that these days, of, you know, leaving your nine to five, starting, you know, going off on your own, starting your own thing. Right. Um, and I, I did too. Like I left clinical practice. Um, it was, you know, a journey to that point, certainly. Um, but I think it's something that we don't talk about often is what that journey looks like afterwards. Right. Like that it's, it, it, that is also part of the journey as well. And that, um, like you mentioned, it can be very complex and nuanced. Um, and there's a lot of ups and downs there too. And I think that we just don't talk about that as, as much, you know, you kind of see all these, I don't know, stories and, and kind of hyped up stories often on social media of what that can look like. 
very idealized, idealized, idealized versions, but realizing, I think we don't talk about it enough, sort of the ups and downs of that journey as well, and, and how that can take a lot of twists and turns as well, right? But like you said, all along that journey, it's really about getting to know yourself better and deepening that relationship with yourself through all that nuanced and complex journey. I mean, that's just life, right? Like life is a, is nuanced and has layers and complexities to it. And so along that way, um, you know, continually and, 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 you know, one thing I always say is like a radiant life starts from within. It's, it's really, I think all of these experiences and challenges really are opportunities for us to deepen that relationship with ourselves and, and knowing that the external situations may not always look the same and they're not meant to always, you know, continue to look the same or in a certain way all the time. Like it's, we're meant to continue to flow with it. Quick shout out to today's sponsor, Reclaim Your Radiance, Radiant Living Institute's signature coaching program designed to help you reclaim your worth, renew your energy, and restore your happiness in your life, career, and relationships. This six-module curriculum has already helped countless women rediscover themselves through life's storms. From setting difficult boundaries within toxic relationships to finding their inner strength and power while navigating divorce and co-parenting to aligning their career and business with their authentic self and to learning how to live for themselves again after their kids have left the nest. This program has been a guiding force for women to live unapologetically and shine brightly within their lives once again, or often even for the first time ever. Experience the results for yourself. Head over to radiantlivinginstitute.com forward slash reclaim dash your dash radiance to learn more and get started. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's really for me a, a crucial part of the process. And I think your did your question have to do with kind of the journey from self oppression into self expression? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. For me, like a lot of you know, just thinking about self-care techniques and, and healing modalities that I've worked with, for me, a lot of that has been in finding the balance between rest and activity. So, you know, I'm so glad to hear that that's something that really resonates with, with you and your practice and your parent, because for me, that's that's been a big part of the journey. Um, because, you know, what I experienced going through this major transition is, you know, like I said, that, you know, people are like, oh, well, now I, you know, connected to my purpose and, you know, everything's so wonderful now. And for me, a lot of it was coming out of a state of self-oppression where uh, taking these periods of rest to kind of decompress from putting myself through a period of such extreme stress for so many years um, was also a lot of the work that I had to do. And so it was such a beautiful unfolding process and it continues to be. And it also has been this process of really discovering a lot about myself. So for example, um, I identify as a highly sensitive person, which means that a lot of my sensory and emotional experiences feel very heightened. And so life can become very overwhelming very easily. And so finding and discovering tactics just through trial and error, like one of the things that I've been working with recently is like that I got myself a Shakti mat. Um, and I don't know if you're familiar, but it's, it's basically an acupressure mat. And so, you know, you, you lay on it, it may not be the most comfortable experience initially, although I think that's a part of the the importance of it but essentially it laying on it will relax your body on a very physical level and so you kind of go into the state of deep, deep relaxation but for me i think it's important to have physical activity and things to kind of like release things from the body but at the same time having a self-care activity that doesn't require exertion you know you don't have to fill up the bath and do all these things and you know it's just like you can simply lay down or you can meditate or what whatever speaks to you but finding the thing that isn't just oh this is the thing that's supposed to help me but falling into the thing that somehow just feels right for you is that's that's also just steps in the journey of being like okay here it is i'm i'm going to be with this and appreciate it and integrate it yeah i love that so much i love that you know mentioning that balance between rest and activity yeah just so much balance and that and that looks different for everybody too and it also mm -hmm. looks different during different seasons of our life right like when when you initially left that 
the first job that you had mentioned to us, uh, you said that you were feeling such a sense of exhaustion and, and burnout, right? And so perhaps during that time, more rest was needed, right? And and like during different seasons of your life and during different phases, that balance of how much rest and activity you need can completely vary. So again, it, it really goes to like cultivating that communication with yourself and and that self-awareness of, of what do I need in that moment and like continually tuning in. And I also love that you mentioned, you know, finding self-care activities that don't necessarily, oh, you know, sometimes that movement is, is, is very necessary, right? And I do think that can be an important part of self-care because like you had mentioned, there's so much research about how, you know, kind of moving things through your body can be really helpful. And mm -hmm. at the same time, having those, again, finding that balance between that rest and activity, like, yes, that can be helpful. But again, if you're pushing yourself, you know, excessively, there can certainly be limits there as well. And so finding those activities that also don't require exertion, right? Like you said, that don't require, okay, drawing a bath, drawing a bath, right? And, and all mm -hmm. of that sort of stuff just kind of laying down. And that made me think of one of my favorite things to do is um, I am familiar with the mat, uh, those acupressure mats that you mentioned. I don't have one uh, myself, but one of my favorite things to do is, is literally just like lay down on the couch and put on nature sounds. And it's not like I'm not trying to fall asleep. Um, I'm not trying to meditate either, right? Because meditation can be kind of an active process, right? Um, requires some concentration, right? Um, especially if it's not something that is already built into your practice. But for me, you know, it's like, I'm not trying to nap. I'm not trying to take a, I'm not trying to meditate. I'm just, I just want to rest, right? <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and like, mm -hmm. what can that look like? And that's one way that looks like for me is sometimes just laying down and putting on some nature sounds and just like listening to those nature sounds in the background um, for a period of time. So, um, that's something that um, your story kind of resonated with me there too and made me think of. Um, so we covered so much, um, just really wonderful points here today so far. I also liked that you mentioned, you know, along this journey, uh, approaching it with gentleness is something that you mentioned. And I think that's so important as well. You know, one of those things, I don't know if this is something that you've experienced, Summer, I'd be curious to know, because I know for me, it certainly has been, you know, even kind of diving deep into all of this. And for many years, um, myself on my own journey, I find I have to remind myself sometimes, like I can find myself still, you know, even though now for the past year and a half at, at this point, I've, you know, left clinical practice, I've been working on my business full time as well. It can sometimes be easy because some of those patterns are already set you know, mm -hmm. both within myself, as well as what I see around me, just culturally, right? Those patterns to push are are there. And so sometimes it's like, even when you do kind of leave that sort of nine to five hustle, right? You can um, find yourself, right? Because those patterns might still be there, still kind of falling into some of those same patterns, right? Uh, and so being mindful of that too, which I think has been a really interesting part of that self-discovery process, right? Because it's like, okay, these external situations have changed, but wait, now it's like, this is just me. Like it, this is now self-imposed, right? Mm -hmm. And so how can I find that balance on my, on, on my own, like for myself? Is that something that you has been part of your journey or self-discovery process at all? I say that absolutely it has been. I mean, I think this is, this is again, the process of self-inquiry and self-discovery of seeing, you know, like you really, you tried to make a change for yourself and, and in many ways, like it, it's happened, it's there. And at the same time, there's a lot of subtleties to who we are and the patterns that we've cultivated for a long time, you know, periods of time that are still stuck. Um, and we can bring them out with a light of awareness, but it, it takes time. One of my most recent challenges actually was my experience last year. So it was for my art, it was a tremendously successful year. Um, I had so much interest in my work. I did a big event and you know, there's a lot of connections made. Um, and yet at the same time, it, I became so busy that I started to become like I, my immune system began to tank. I was sick multiple times. I was bitten by a tick. I got like a random weird, you know, it just seemed like everything everywhere was coming at me. And what I started to realize is that again, you know, the body responds. Um, the body was saying to me again and again, very urgently, summer, you need to slow down. And I was finding myself incapable of saying no. 
And this is something that has been a hallmark of my life that I love to help people and make meaningful change. And I just, you know, I want to do things. And there's such a passion for this that blazes within me. And at the same time, my body had reached its limit and it was telling me that I needed to stop. Um, And it took me, you know, the better part of the year to slow down because I just was like on this roll and I just wanted to be on this ride. And as a person who's very passionate and is very much an advocate of, of caring for the body as, you know, an act of compassion and love, even for me, it was hard. And so it took that time. But at the same time, what I like about experiences such as this one is that it's, you know, you're struggling with an issue, but you're learning at the same time. So there kind of might be the sense of frustration. It's like, well, I haven't gotten, you know, I haven't fixed this. This hasn't, you know, been resolved yet. But I also see life as an experience of being on a spiral. And so we come again and again to these deeply embedded issues or, you know, traumas or what whatnot that are embedded within us. And it may not be that we see them once, we experience them once and we fix them in the old. I find that often they come again and again. And often we if we confront them, you know, we've done some work on them and the next time might be a little bit more of an echo of the, you know, the original situation. Um, but we're we're still working on it. And I, I do think that that deepens our connection to ourselves and our capacity to develop resilience um, if we're willing to address them and work with them. So it, it can be difficult and incredibly challenging, but at the same time, it's like, well, I, I sure did grow from that year and I feel so much stronger as a result. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. And I got, you know, just such a beautiful visualization as you described that of it being like a spiral and, and when, you know, So often it can be kind of like, oh, goodness, why am I going through this again, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Life can sometimes feel like that with certain experiences. But like you said, yeah, each time it's, it's, there's, there's always lessons inherent in them. And there, it may just be a a little bit more, you know, nuanced or a different sort of angle on that lesson to be learned, right? It's not that you're necessarily experiencing the same exact thing over and over again, right? There's just these different nuances. And and each time we are learning a bit more and diving deeper into um, this journey really of of self-discovery, self-inquiry. So goodness, Summer, I have enjoyed this conversation so much. I feel like just like when we chatted on the phone before this recording, I feel like there's so much more we could chat about. Um, But for time's sake, I would love for you to share with our listeners where they can find more about you and the beautiful artwork. You guys, you have to check out her artwork. It is just incredible. Yeah, just incredible. So where can they find that? Yes, thank you so much. Yeah. um, And and just to go a little bit very briefly into it, my art um, is, is really an expression of my own transformational journey. Um, so it's very near and dear to my heart and, and to who I am, who I am as a being, as well as what, you know, I seek to inspire others toward in their own lives. Um, so I consider myself a visionary artist. Um, I work with the mandala as a, a sacred archetype of the universe and of the self. Um, so if you want to find me online and look at my work online, you can go to summerblake.com. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram as art of summer blake uh same for facebook but but yeah love to connect uh and it's such a profoundly beautiful experience to to carry this message as a visual artist wonderful thank you so much and i will include all those links in the show notes thank you again for being here today summer thank you so much such a pleasure Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Essential Self-Care Podcast. If you like what you heard, be sure to subscribe, leave a positive review, and share this episode with someone you know. And remember, your free guide, Six Simple Yet Powerful Steps to Create Your Radiant Life, is waiting for you at RadiantLivingInstitute.com. Download it today.